Hello everyone. So I welcome all the viewers of Gyan Darshan channel to yet another program for the investor education that is rights of the shareholder. As we know, whenever we invest money in a company, we became the shareholder and by becoming shareholder, it's not that we are the shareholders, we have bundle of rights with us. So whenever we buy shares in a company, let's say for a, uh, from, for, for, uh, from a for shares of the big company from a stock exchange, then we became the shareholder. We also call, we also known as the members of the company. So just getting share does not mean that we are only the shareholders. Whenever we buy shares, we carry a lot of rights with us. That we say that we have bundle of rights with us. So today we are going to discuss that the once you become shareholder, what are the rights you have? What uh, are the powers you have? How you can exercise those rights? So whether you are uh, you are a member of a company, whether you are getting the dividend in time or not, what exactly you can ask the management of the company? What exactly you can do against the management of the company? All these are the things which we are going to cover in today's topic. That is right of the shareholders we know first we need to understand who is a shareholder as i said ki the moment you buy shares in a shares of a company you become the shareholder so that means share is a basically the ownership the right which, which you get in a company in in technical term if i if i say shareholder means who is the owner of the company who actually who actually invest money in a company by through which the company runs but we know company is basically an artificial person company is it's only a name company always runs through two basically through two sets of bodies number one is the shareholders who actually invest money in the company other it's board of directors board of directors means we call the management of the company the directors of the company who actually controls day to day affairs of the company being shareholder you invest money in a company being shareholder you became the owner of the company being shareholder you have lot of rights but you can never participate in day to day affairs of the company that's why the companies act the law gives us the power to exercise certain rights as shareholder the law gives us the right certain rights so by which we can protect ourselves we can protect our money which we have invested in a company we can protect the company as well if management is doing something wrong if they are not utilizing the shareholders money in a proper manner then accordingly we as a shareholder can always intervene we as a shareholder can always participate in a company directly or indirectly so that our money should be protected so one thing we should always remember ki being shareholder one once i say ki we are the shareholder of the company that means we are the owners of the company though we cannot participate directly in the company but still law gives us lot of rights so by exercising those rights in the company we can control the company or we can control the management of the company as well shareholders are the owners of the company let's say for example mr a owns certain shares in a company in x industries limited then mr a is a shareholder of x industries limited on it's nothing wrong in saying that if i am saying mr x is a uh, shareholder of a company or owner of the company that means he ha he has certain control he has certain powers in the company though it may be a minute right let's say mr x is holding only 1% shares in a company 1% means what out of the total share capital of a company is holding only 1% shares which mean he is the owner of those 1% shares so he has a right to to the extent of that 1% only though very minute rights but still he is the owner he is a shareholder of a company even though you are holding one share he still has he still has lot of rights in the company who can become shareholder it says anyone the law does not provide any restriction unless you are not specifically prohibited by any law unless you are not specifically debarred by like let's say for example by under, under rbi under fema or any any other thing otherwise if we if we talk about the companies right says there is no such disqualification no such qualification any person who is a competent person who can enter into a contract who can do the contracts uh, who is eligible to do contract can invest money in a company and by which he can become shareholder so law does not prohibit anyone except the person should be a capable person of doing any contract so there is no such qualification there is no such disqualification specifically if you look at the companies act the companies act doesn't talk about any qualification or disqualification of shareholder just invest money in the company 
through primary market or even through secondary market so you can become the shareholder and the moment you become shareholder the moment you buy share that means you are the shareholder of a company you are the owner of the company right members uh in technical speaking in technical term or in 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 say in a layman's language shareholder and member is one and the same thing if i am saying i am a shareholder of a company so that means i am member of the company as well but we are generally you know very very much familiar with the term shareholder because we know we invest money in a company the shares of the company so by which we say we are the shareholder but if we talk about of a company having share capital share shareholder and member is one of the same thing so how you can become member of a company like it says by subscribing to the memorandum of association the moment you incorporate the company the moment you decide to float a company the moment you become promoter of a company by subscribing the memorandum and article of association at the time of incorporation one person can become member see if today i want to become member of a company i want to become shareholder of any company so what are the various way by which i can become member so one either i can float my own company i will incorporate my company by which i'll become member secondly or else i can buy shares from the market by agreeing in writing maybe i have entered a, i have open a dmat account or maybe in a, in a private limited company or in a unlisted company where uh, shares are not in dematerialized funds so i can i can buy the shares from the i can i can acquire share from the company by way of various you know various procedure the various things that company has to do like if you are coming for a private placement if company is coming up with a uh, right issue or company is issuing a bonus shares so by applying these shares under the different methodologies i can always become member of a company but one thing is very sure if ever you want to become member of a company either through a primary market or through a secondary market the person should agree in writing so there should be something in writing to become member either you apply share in an application form either you open a dmat account you get a right to trade in the stock market openly that this is the reason that say it says ki in writing you can always become member of a company so if you want to become member if you want to become shareholder so you have different ways why the the way you can become member one is by subscribing to the memorandum by which you become promoter of the company secondly uh, by applying shares in a company in case whenever company comes up with a comes up with a issue of shares maybe by way of a right issue or maybe the uh, public issue or by having a shares in a dmat form when you open a dmat accounts you get a right to trade shares in the stock market so by which you can become member of a company but for this session of us like today we are talking about the right of shareholder if i'm talking about members if i'm talking about shareholders for us this is one and the same thing that's why we are given the name it's a rights of shareholder so i am not wrong in saying that if i say rights of the members or if i say rights of the shareholder or rights of the member one and the same thing for us for this particular session types of shareholder we know generally we are familiar with the concept of like we have equity shareholders like we have equity shareholders so generally there are basically uh, two categories of basically shares that can be issued by the company one is equity share and this other is preference shares now what exactly the difference is but difference is there between equity share and preference share we, that's that's very 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 much you know very, we are very much familiar with the equity shares that's it but exact difference between equity and preference shares is if we talk about equity shares equity shareholder means those shareholders who are the actual ordinary shareholders or owner of the company they don't have any preferential rights so that company belongs to them if i am saying i am a equity shareholder of a company that means that company belongs to me without any priority without any preference without any specific rights to me because apart from that if we talk about preference shareholders because preference shareholders are those shareholders which get preference over equity shares so if we say equity shares are the ordinary shareholder without any preference actually the company belongs to the equity shareholders that means if company will not be in a position to pay any amount to anyone equity shareholder will not get anything first the liabilities of the company who are the outsiders and then the liability of preference shareholders whatever is there that will be paid first after paying all the liabilities of the company whatever will be left with the company that will go to the equity shareholders that's why we call equity shareholders are like ordinary shareholders ordinary means without any preference so you are the actual owner ultimately if someone has to suffer at the end of the day or maybe at the time of winding up of the company it's the equity shareholder so they are the equity shareholder who will suffer at the end of the day 
because you will not get anything out of the company if there will be nothing if company will not have any assets if there will be uh, you know there will be a lot of liabilities in the company so first liabilities will be paid off out of the assets of the company if something will be left then equity shareholder will get if nothing will be left then equity shareholder will not get anything out of it that's why you are the ordinary shareholders so you become equity but obviously if you become equity shareholder then you have more rights as compared to the preference shareholders if you are equity shareholders that means you can enjoy more benefits in the company as compared to the preference shareholders so coming to this preference shareholders preference shareholders means what preference shareholder means as a name indicate preference to whom preference is given to whom preference is being given preference in the sense preference only with respect to certain amount of dividend or maybe the repayment of their capital at the time of winding up and that is before equity shareholder preference shareholder will always get preference shareholder will always get preference as the name indicates a preference they always get preference before equity shareholder that means if company going company is going for the winding up then all the liabilities of the company will be paid off after that whatever is left that will go to the preference shareholder and after that if something will be left that would be given to the equity shareholders so if we look at the in in an in the order of free payment ki how the payment is made or how the payment is being done to the to the outsiders at the time of winding up equity shareholder that comes at the last and before that preference is given to the preference shareholders so as the name indicates they are the preference shareholders so that's why we are giving preference to them so remember one thing preference shareholder gets preference only in two things one is they get a fixed rate of dividend number two at the time of winding up they get repayment preference before equity and make sure not before any other creditors if outside creditors are there in a company and company has to pay a lot of liabilities to the creditors so preference share will not get their money first company will pay the liabilities to them after that whatever the, all the liabilities like liabilities government dues employees dues whatever is there so that would be paid first before anything is paid to the preference shareholder once preference shareholder will be paid then whatever is left that will go to the equity shareholder so before after paying liability what is being paid to the shareholders preference shareholder will always get the preference that's why name indicates they are the preference shareholders of the company that as i said types of shareholder like we have equity shareholder and we have preference shareholder but that is true we know we are very much familiar with the concept of equity share we always invest in the equity market so we know equity shareholder uh, very much as compared to the preference shareholders so now equity shareholders as i said equity shareholder are the ordinary and the main stakeholder so look at the uh, look at the line it's meant the word is main stakeholder main main that means they are the ordinary main they are the actual and true owner of the company actual and true owner so obviously being owner of the company you will not get anything from the company unless unless outsiders or maybe the outside liabilities are not paid even preference shares are not paid so you are the main stakeholder so ultimately you are getting all the benefits you are enjoying all the rights in a company and you will get the payment even only at the end of the end of uh, after paying all the liabilities of the company that's why if you are getting more benefits the equity shareholders they have to suffer a lot as well if there will be nothing in a company and if company is a cash rich company if company has lot of cash lot of money lot of assets then obviously equity shareholders are the shareholders who will get lot of benefits out of out of it ownership of the company like we say member and ownership depends on the percentage of the capital percentage so that's why equity shareholder get the profits of the company by way of dividend dividend and make sure as i said equity shareholders uh, they are the actual owner of a company and whatever the dividend is to be paid to the equity shareholder is not fixed it's not fixed it's not necessary that they will get the dividend it's not